Hi, Brian. Hey, how's it going? Not too bad, thanks. Good to speak to you. No, no problem. Congratulations, I think, um, are um, in order. Thank you very much. It must have, uh, the last couple of months, obviously been uh, an exciting time for you in the band. Been very exciting. We've been on the road non-stop, so we're having a great time. It's like a, it's a dream, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, not a moment too soon, I'm sure. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I said, um, it's been it's been a couple of years for for you and John. Obviously, you've uh, obviously been together the longest um, out of uh, out of everyone else in the band. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, we've been playing together since 1991, and uh, we formed Nine Days in '95. So the band the band's been together about six years now. Mm. And and it took all that time to to get to the point that we are now. Oh yeah, long time. <laughs> was it um, was it a difficult time um, or a, a time that you look back on and, and are grateful for? No, I'm grateful for every day. I mean, we um, I wouldn't change anything. I mean, we um, uh, it's about ten years, I guess, it took us to get to where we are now. And uh, we played in a couple different bands and formed Nine Days six years ago, and it was the same five guys that are together now. And uh, each year we just kept taking a step up, you know, and each year got better until we finally had some success. Mm -hmm. What did it take to uh, to get the deal with uh, with Five Fifty Music? Was it uh, were you coaching them for quite some time, or did they approach you? What, how did that come together? So, well, through the years, the band was together, and we put out three records on our own independently. Um, when we started this band, John and I just figured we weren't going to wait for anyone to do anything for us. That's why we put out our own CDs. And after the third one, we just decided uh, we did that. We were going to really concentrate on, you know, getting a record deal. And we just we showcased a lot through, through New York City, playing different clubs and having a lot of record companies come down. And we were passed, passed by every company at least twice even. So mm. um, we just kept writing songs and writing songs, kept coming back with new material. And finally, um, we put out a demo in August of 98 of uh, you know, a three-song demo. And um, a guy on the West Coast named Mio Vukovic from 2550 got it, and he flew out from California, came to New York to see us. Mm -hmm. And he was very passionate about the music, as we were, so he knew he was the guy to go with, and Sony was the company, and we just went right with him. Right. Now, how many of the songs that appear on uh, The Maddening Crowd were the, the tracks that he heard that, uh, that, that, that captured that? Oh well, yes, one of them was absolutely. Nah. <laughs> absolutely was the first song written for that record. Actually, the, the the whole record is pretty much brand new. I mean, absolutely was written and on a demo, and that's what started all the interest. And then after we got all the interest, that the rest of the record was basically written all the way up until we went into the studio. Actually, mm -hmm. so it's, it's a new record. So it was um, as I say with with obviously the interest that came with absolutely did that that obviously must have guided um, how you how you put the the balance of the album together. Yeah, that, that song definitely made the wheels start rolling. And after our, our, our turn, our writing took a turn right when that song was written, and all the interest started happening. Mm -hmm. It just all came out of us right there. And if you if you had to sum it up, what what changed for you, for you as songwriters? Say that again. Sir. What what was that change in you know by comparison to the way that you were you were writing and recording up to that point? Um, what what changed? Um, really changed. It just kind of gave us a, a boost, I guess. And um, we, uh, the style, the records are a little less edgy than this one. And um, it just really inspired us. Like um, like any song would. Every time I hear a good song on the radio or if I'm listening to some old records or something and when I hear a good song or a good lyric, it just inspires me to become a better writer. So when that when that started happening, it just inspired John and I to really you know, put our put our minds to it, and we just started writing, and the stuff just came really easy. Mm -hmm. And on the back of it, obviously, um, it was a, a route that was uh, was was the right one to take. But how, how do you, you know, how, you know? It's always interesting to me, you know, um, just as a layman for a songwriter like your, you know, like yourself and and John, to come up with a song, um, a, a typical song that is say three and three and a half, four and a half minutes long, and be able to try and capture um, the 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 passion and the message that you're trying to get across in in three and a half minutes is is, is that quite difficult, you know, to to do. 
Well, it depends. It's like um, we never sat down and said, okay, we're going to write a hit song. You know what I mean? Absolutely was written in a day, I think. It was written by John, and it was just something that happened and something that inspired him one day between him and his now fiance, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it just kind of fell out of him. You know, they were having an argument or something at a gig, parted ways, and uh, he looked across the room, and she was amongst friends laughing. And he just realized as much as he, she drives him crazy, that he absolutely loves her when she's happy, when she smiles, and that kind of inspired him right there and mm. he sat down with the guitar and it just came right out of him mm. and the song was written pretty quickly and sometimes other songs will take you know six months to a year to finish so sure. so you know it all depends and um um, I, I must admit, one of my favorite tracks on the album um, is, is the Bob Dylan track, obviously an ode of sorts to the man himself, because uh, you, have a, you have a lot of inspiration, well, a lot of people that have inspired you know, what has become the sound of Nine Days. Um, why specifically Bob Dylan? Well, Dylan is just amazing. To me, he's like... John and I both are big fans of Bob Dylan, and like he was, he was one of the guys that when we started this band, we just he just really inspired us to become better songwriters and write the best songs we can. You know, same thing with Bruce Springsteen and Neil Young and those type of singer songwriter artists. And um, like I said, we we don't compare ourselves to them at all, but they're just the type, the type of people that inspire us to become better. And um, when I was writing the song Bob Dylan, it was wasn't called Bob Dylan. It was just, it was just a song, and the song is basically just about being an artist yes. in general. Mm. And um, I, I had the idea of, you know, I was listening to some of his records one day, and two of the lines stuck out, and I thought I could put those lines in my lyrics, and it would kind of, it would kind of help say, say what I was saying, and it would also be kind of a cool thing mm. to have his voice in there. So I tried it out on my own, you know, recording studio, and then the band thought it was pretty cool, so we worked on it. Later on, I named the song Bob Dylan after having his lines in there. I thought it would be a cool theme to tie it together, and of course, have his name. It's so always with the up some interest. So, so um, we got the uh, permission to use those samples, which I be sure that he's not oh. anyone ever, ever do I think so. It's like an honor to have his his voice on our record and his name mm. like, under mine. You know, it says written by Defoe and Dylan was between the names. Yes, and uh, it's just you know it's just an honor to have him on there with us. Because I mean, I think every musician, when you know, I mean, to have an album released is great, and obviously to have um, you know hundreds of thousands of people listening to your to your songs is great as well. But f for you, what is the what has been the biggest compliment that's been paid to you um, as a musician on the back of the success that you've enjoyed so far? Oh, it's definitely the response from the crowds and the fans. I mean, we've uh, been touring since March, and, you know, each month it's just been getting better and better, and since the record's been released, and the, the people sing the songs, you know, back to you. And when uh, we knew it was going to happen, when it absolutely became a hit, obviously everyone knew that song. and. Mm. That was great. That was amazing. One of the first shows we played when the crowd was singing absolutely back. I mean, John started the song and I couldn't hear him. Like the crowd was so loud singing it and that was pretty amazing. But then after that, just you see people singing words to the other songs and that's, that's probably the best compliment when they know the music and the reaction from the crowd and then, then we react off them and so, so and back and forth and just an amazing feeling to be out there. And we love to play live. So that's with that compliment Sure. Because I think, um, obviously, America is <clears throat> is not a small country, so um, I think any band's true success is taking being able to take an album on the road and be able to replicate and make that better live. That's obviously something that you as a band have gotten right in more ways than one. I think so. I mean, what I've heard from other people, they say usually a band is always chasing the record, and the record is always better than the band, and live, they're not that good. But for some reason, for us, it's the opposite. We're, we always seem to be chasing our live show and trying to capture that on record. Mm. So I guess that's not a bad problem to have. Mm. But um, I think we... Uh, we did our best with our producer to, to catch the band live in the studio on the on the Madden crowd and mm. uh, like like I said before, live is what we're all about. We love to play live and mm. we just hope more and more people come to see us. Collectively, as a, as a band, I mean, obviously being on the road, you've been on the road for, well, 
to say a good half a year um, thus far. What what is the biggest challenge for you know for you and the and the guys being out on the road? Um, well, well, I know a few of the guys have girlfriends and even a wife and fiancés. I think it's kind of hard to uh, keep the relationship going because we're we're never home really. Mm. But um, they seem to be doing all right. I mean, I don't have that problem. There's nothing tying me back to New York. But mm. it's hard missing family and friends. You know, we've been home a long time. And all of a sudden now for six months, we're just gone. And uh, that's pretty tough. But you, you don't never hear us complain. This is something mm. we've dreamed about and waited for for years and all our lives even. So um, I guess that would probably be the hardest thing. But, um you know, just trying to stay healthy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The cold right now. Yeah, it's yeah. It's hard when you when you have a cold. Same, yeah. And it's uh, we, we we have the exact opposite weather to you at the moment, so yeah, we're we're lucky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, would 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 you say that um that, that the band success has been has brought brought the band closer together? Um, you know, over over the last uh, certainly over over the the past year. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe I know. I mean, like I said, the band's been together, for the same five guys for six years, and I think back at home we had our time alone. Mm. Like you know, we we meet for rehearsals and shows and stuff, but we've always been apart. Now we're together, you know, I think 24 hours a day. Mm. So um, I don't know. In a way, it it might have brought us closer, but it's also might have uh, not separated us at all. But I know. A lot of times when we're um, when we're not playing, we could usually, we usually go our own way, you know, mm. during the day, maybe do our own thing. Mm. But whenever we walk onto that stage, it doesn't matter if we haven't seen each other in you know the past two days, where everything just whoop, goes yeah. right together. And it's pretty amazing in that sense. Mm, mm, mm. Now, America's famous for starting a band, creating an image, and almost creating a almost a, a pop machine or a rock machine and mm-hmm. when I look at and when I listen to uh, the likes of a nine days it, it's all about the songs it's all about the lyric um, whether you, you know you, you guys are selling something not typically what you know um, is is perceived as being your um, a, a huge well rock success or pop success um, you, you seem to um, approached it from a, a very honest, very upfront sort of um, way. Would how how would you define how you guys have um, gotten to the place that you have? Well, a lot of a lot of music in the past, I guess, year or so, have been you know a lot of the pop groups like the boy bands and mm. the Spears and all that stuff. And all that stuff is basically it's built and it's all put together and it's handpicked and it's crafted by like a producer or something. Mm. And um, the songs are written for them. And I'm not knocking them; it's a totally different thing in the sure. entertainment, you know. And those kids work hard and stuff. But in our case, we did this all on our own. I mean, for ten years, John and I have been together playing in bands, you know. Um, in, in the tri-state area and then six years with these five members as nine days putting out our own records mm. putting out our own songs writing our own songs there are like hundreds of songs that aren't even you know on record that we've written and mm. we've just built it and built it and we we played clubs on Long Island New York and built a fan base there and then moved into New York City built a fan, ba- fan base there and just every year we just kept taking a step up and getting better and getting our music out more I mean when we made our own CDs we didn't sell them to make money I mean we basically mm. gave them away and mm. everything we sold them for nothing at gigs basically just to get our music out there mm. and all the way up until the Madden crowd and we finally got our record deal and got to show the rest of the world what the band is about I mean there's really no big uh, it's not very complicated it's just five mm. guys from New York and write their own songs and for John and I the songs are very personal they're all things we've lived through and uh, are experienced and um that's basically it and, and even when we went to the studio uh, our producer I mean our producer was great he definitely got the sounds on the record captured the band live and he changed a few of the songs but for the most part our songs were there I mean there wasn't much anything to change so we mm. went to the studio and, and captured that is he um, do, do you see yourselves um, using him again uh, when it comes time to do album album two for Epic oh yeah definitely mm. Mm-hmm. Well, um, as I said, 
I think short of that, um, congratulations again. I think it's uh, it's um, it's. I've been watching your success uh, since the album uh, was released, and even as I say, from the time of Absolutely, and I certainly don't think you've uh, reached the top of the mountain yet, as far as that's concerned. Well, hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully, we'll keep going. Excellent. Well, Brian, thank you for your time. Well, thank you very much. And good luck with the rest of the tour. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.